<laughs> it was in the mid 90s. <laughs> and now the funny story begins. And for three weeks, I was listed as a missing person by Interpol. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, when did this happen? In the mid 90s. Where were you? Had you, had you actually disappeared? Like... I was in Morocco. What were you doing there? I was on a bike ride in Spain. <laughs> you were on, you were on a bike ride in Spain in Morocco. <laughs> Can I have a moment to chat with my client. <laughs> 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 what happened was. I met someone in Spain on a train, a Moroccan so, man. Was, was, was this bike ride in Spain happening on the train? <laughs> was it? It was like because I know that you get those Spanish Spanish bike rides on trains in Morocco. <laughs> it's probably one of those. No, it was. There was bad weather, and that's why I took the train from the north of Spain to the south of Spain because apparently, according to the local newspaper, there was better. More agreeable bicycling weather. <laughs> how, how, did you then get, how did you then get into Morocco, though? That is did because I met that Moroccan bloke on the train. <laughs> <laughs> and, which, and which Moroccan bloke? Yeah, does he have a name? Uh, I, I can't quite remember, but it was Mohammed or something. <laughs> But Mohammed the Moroccan, yeah. you met on, on the train in Spain. <laughs> he asked me if I wanted to join him to go to Morocco. And then I thought, well, I've never been outside Europe. In for penny, in for pound. So, uh, <laughs> so, so you were picked up by a strange Moroccan on a, on a train and agreed to go back to Morocco with him. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> how, how did you find out that you were on the Interpol list? I realised only once I rang my parents, once I was back in Spain, and I rang my parents, and for them it was like someone found them from beyond the grave. <laughs> <laughs> so, so why didn't you ring your parents from Morocco? Because that man, that Mohammed... He, <laughs> he you remember, remember Mohammed, don't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The man on the train. The Moroccan on the, the train. The Moroccan on the train yeah, who invited yeah. him back to his house. So, yeah. and then when I was staying uh, with Mustafa and his family. <laughs> <laughs> From what uh, port did you leave Spain and into which port did you enter good Morocco? Question. Good question. Well, we left Spain, if I remember correctly, from Algeciras and went over to Ceuta which is one of the two Spanish enclaves in the north of Morocco. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've just clutched victory from the jaws of defeat. <laughs> <laughs> How was it then resolved? How did you end up getting off of the list? Well, hang on a minute, we're jumping ahead here. Yeah. What the yeah, hell he's allowed to do that, him, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> what, what were you doing? I was travelling uh, with, uh, with uh, no, uh, Mohammed. Uh, uh, <laughs> my client is getting mixed up because at passport control they said he must have a passport. <laughs> and he's getting a bit mixed up with the name. I'm curious as to the fact that Interpol has a missing persons list. Yeah, no, what happened is my uh, parents uh, got involved and they got Interpol involved. Right. And I sent a few postcards, one of them, to my friend Mark. And on that postcard, I wrote, I've joined the Foreign Legion. <laughs> <laughs> Probably see you never again, have a good life or something. And then, Mark being a quite clever boy, thought, OK, with this postcard, I can have a lot of fun. I go round Henning's parents and say them something along the lines of, oh, uh, Herr Wien, Frau Wien, you might be interested in this. Sorry, so your friend Mark yes. used this postcard to mentally torture your parents. <laughs> I'll make his parents think he's disappeared forever for a laugh. Well, it's German sense of humour. <laughs> About this, uh, about this Moroccan chap who we're calling Mohammed. He hadn't been home for many, many years, and so we couldn't take the boat straight to Morocco. We had to go to one of the Spanish enclaves, 
because he had to collect a suitcase full of books from a cafe in <laughs> Sota. <laughs> why, why did he have a suitcase full of books? Because someone left them there for him. <laughs> but why books? In a suitcase. Well, that is, it was back in the mid 90s, people were still reading. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he went to a cafe in the Spanish enclave of Morocco yes. to collect a suitcase which he told you was full of books. <laughs> well, I suppose a friend of his left them there. Yes, but why? I mean, you know what it sometimes is like, isn't it? Like, uh, well, I can't quite think of it. <laughs> <laughs> but if he could, it would be like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, this Interpol list that you were on, can you just elaborate on how your parents got you onto it? Well, they rang the consulate and they rang which all sorts consulate? of... Which consulate? The German one. Which, and... which German consulate? Well, the one in Morocco. They, they, they didn't the ring the police, in... they rang the German consulate in Morocco. Well, that's how you would go about it, wouldn't you? It's not good know. ringing your local Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> and what happens then with the list? Do you just... They have to tell Interpol, stop yeah. looking for Henning. We yeah, found I suppose it. so, yeah. Well, did they? <laughs> for all My we know, they're still quite... looking for you now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm safe! <laughs> So what do you think, David? Does, that, does any of that have the ring of truth, or has he made all that up? What do you think, Kirsty? I think it's so odd and inconsistent and unlikely that it must be true. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm leaning towards. Well, yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I think I, I think, think that as true. well. I think it's true. Yeah. Henning, was that the truth, or were you telling a lie? Well, this story is true. <laughs> 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 For three weeks, I carted an empty box around without realising that what I bought wasn't actually in it. <laughs> David, Steve. Right. Um, what, what, what was it? What did you imagine it was? What it was... It was a... <laughs> no, don't let me lie. It was... <laughs> Uh, there was in there was uh, a, a plastic Christmas tree. That... <laughs> That's what you thought was in there. Absolutely. For three weeks. But that's something you open quite quickly after buying it a Christmas tree. No, it's about the suspense, isn't it? Christmas is all about suspense, and I don't think it's all about suspense yes. because. In general, when you buy a box that you think contains an artificial Christmas tree, you just assume that it does. You don't go, oh, I wonder if it's really in there. <laughs> if, you, if you're seriously wondering if it's really in there, you'd check before you left the shop, wouldn't you? Yeah, maybe I'd chosen my words not very wisely. <laughs> Some of it got lost in translation. <laughs> Where did you buy it, by the way? Uh. At, at Argos. As you left the shop, did it not occur to you that it was quite light, this box? Yes, but what... And yeah, but now, now it gets interesting. Um, <laughs> no, because I... Shortly before that, I'd started doing yoga to <laughs> increase my... Uh, to improve my core strength. <laughs> so I didn't think any of it. I thought, in such good physical shape... <laughs> box without it straining me. <laughs> the queues at Argos are huge. Yeah. How long was you in the queue for? For ages. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a few weeks later that Absolutely. you opened it, ready for Christmas. Nothing was in there. What happened next? Well, I kept the box, didn't I? <laughs> So you went on to have this Christmas without a Christmas tree in your flat? I actually, believe it or not, I did use the box instead of the Christmas tree. As a tree? Because, yeah, because there was pictures of a Christmas <laughs> tree on the outside. <laughs> 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 the saddest Christmas yeah. ever. I have one further question. Yes? Why were you carrying this box around with you for three weeks? 
When I say I, I, I didn't take it to social occasion, I didn't say to the boss, <laughs> do we want to go down the where, park? Where, and then the, where the, did then the box at what, end of November? Far too cold. Well, so. I did not ask you whether or not you socialised with the box. I went, I tell you what, I took the box into town with me on one occasion. <laughs> I went all the way into Leicester Square with the box. <laughs> Why, on the occasion that you were going into Leicester Square, did you take it with you? That is a very good question, David. Yeah. And I shall give you the answer. <laughs> because the box and I... <laughs> and I were going to do a comedy show. On how many journeys did you take this Christmas tree, other than the one from Argos to your flat and the one from your flat to so the comedy show in Leicester Square? Can we just keep it a bit lighter? He's not up for a war crime. <laughs> 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 not, not on this occasion, anyway. <laughs> David, what do you think? What do you think, Sean? I'm sort of having it. A little bit, because <laughs> anything you buy from Argos, even if it's a big wardrobe, it doesn't weigh anything when you walk out with a box. <laughs> Are yeah. you an Argos man, Sean? I used to be. Really? Big time, yeah. What stopped you? Uh, fame. <laughs> <laughs> Tom? I, don't, I think he's... I mean, it's a ridiculous of. story. But, I mean, he's a canny, canny fella. T so, should we go for true? Yeah. True? Yeah. We, we're going to say true. All right. Henny, truth or lie? This story is true. Uh, this is Nicola, and she taught me how to talk to crows. This is Nicola. I once chased her for 40 miles down the M3 because I thought she'd stolen my phone. This is Nicola, and I told my parents to sack her as my babysitter because she failed to read my bedtime stories with enough emotion. What was wrong with the bedtime story? I didn't enjoy the way she read the bedside story to me. What sort of stories? Give us an example. She was reading Hansel and Gretel to me, and then the witch ends up in the oven. And she read that in a very compassionate way. Towards the witch? Yeah. And the good thing at that point is all about the witch got what she had come in, and that's how I like the story read to me. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't like any, any complexity in the character? No, I like the complexity, but I don't like the compassion towards the witch, because she's a witch. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so Hansel and Gretel shove the witch in the <laughs> oven, slam the door, turn it up to gas mark six. No, no, <laughs> always, always preheat the oven before cooking the <laughs> <a> witch. <laughs> <laughs> Let's assume it's preheated. OK. Slam the door, okay. turn it up, and then walk out into the forest. Mm. How did she misdeliver that line? Well, it was in German, so it was like... <laughs> Is she German? Nicola, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. You mean yeah, yeah, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Nicola's a classic German name, isn't it? Nicola. <laughs> Nicola Schmidt. So she was, what, she was just, she was, what, weeping for the witch, or what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't want to have to say this now, but I just didn't overly like her. <gasps> <laughs> that obviously is not how I told it to my parents, isn't it? Daddy. I said to my parents, I said, yeah, she didn't put any butter on the bread and all that business, and didn't get me anything to drink, so, I mean... Uh... <laughs> I stuck her in the oven. <laughs> I think it's probably Henning. I think Henning's the sort of... could have been the sort of vicious little child. <laughs> and would have her babysitter summarily dismissed for no good reason at all. Which way are you going, Alex? Do you know what? I'm going to stick my neck on the line. I think... I think Lee. Am I even you getting think a it's Lee? Yeah. Doom? Um, I initially thought it was Lee. Completely, from the very beginning, when I heard what the three things were, I went, it's definitely Lee. I, I'm not going to overrule. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Henning. We'll go for Lee. We You're saying it's Lee, it's Lee yeah. with a little suspicion that it's Henning. OK. Yeah. Nicola, would you please reveal your true identity? My name is Nicola, and I taught Ben how to talk to crows. This is Bill. <laughs> I once bought an Irish accent mouth spray from him cos I genuinely believed 
It would give me an Irish accent. <laughs> Clara, how do you know Bill? So this is Bill, and when my chair broke, he let me sit on his back so I could interview Nicki Minaj. All right. Finally, Lee, what's your relationship with Bill? This is Bill. I had to leave my life drawing class <laughs> when, <laughs> when he walked in, disrobed, and I realised he was the man that sold me my sausages. <laughs> There we have it. Is Bill Clara's spare chair, Henning's spray cellar, or Lee's model mate? David's team, where would you like to begin? Henning. Henning Vane. So explain the thing about this spray. Bill has actually got a shop. And I walked past his shop and I saw Irish accent spray. <laughs> and I hadn't written a decent joke in a long time. I thought, well... Let's get that spray. <laughs> so when you say you saw Irish accent spray, what, what do you mean? Like, um, well, it's like a helium balloon. <laughs> it's a balloon. No, no, it's a spray, but it changes your accent. Instead of making your voice more high-pitched, it yeah. makes it more Irish, Irish accented. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although, mixed with the accent you've already got, <laughs> God knows what that could do. <laughs> <laughs> and what shop sells this? What yeah. shop? Uh, like one of them uh, that you have got around Camden. Bill's got a shop in Camden. Yeah. And th his best product is a spray <laughs> that makes you sound Irish. Well, yeah, I, what, I didn't what? buy all his products, so I can't rank them. <laughs> in... <laughs> but it's, it, well, let's get the genre of shop clear. It's a, it, a sort of joke shop, is it? Well, you call it as derogatively as you want. <laughs> <laughs> By joke shop, I don't mean a, 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 a risible shop. <laughs> I mean a shop that sells joke items like whoopee cushions and... Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, fake blood yeah, and... Yeah, yeah. That Sounds sort of well. shop. And when did this happen? <laughs> uh, <laughs> the best part of ten years ago, say. Was there a reason you needed to sound Irish? No, it was just I thought... That's another string to my bow. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, so what, <laughs> how did you how did you imagine it being used in your stand up maybe if i tell a joke where irishmen go to the pub <laughs> do you know a joke where irishmen go to the pub that you could tell in your current accent but you could mime the point at which it you would have, have sprayed your it would like go there is an english fella going into the pub and <laughs> says Oh, jolly good morning, my good fellow. <laughs> oh, right. And then... Wow, and he didn't then, even have any spray for that. <laughs> Brilliant. Jolly good morning. So you don't need a spray. And then, you can not do for it. English, not for... And then, oh, and then an uh, Irishman goes in the pub and then I spray. Yeah, OK. And then I go, <laughs> top of the morning. <laughs> <laughs> David's team. Is Bill Clara's spare chair? Uh, Henning's spray seller or Lee's model mate? <laughs> I think we need to ask, are you absolutely sure that one of them is true? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I think, on the ra in the radio situation, I think they probably could find a, yeah. a chair or standing... There's a better solution than for six minutes sitting on a human yeah, being. <laughs> what about Lee? Well, it's just that's not true. I, I'm, see, see I'm, I'm, I've got to say that he's literally not moved. He's, he's not shown any emotion. Mm. Now, if I'm going to draw a man naked, I'm going to draw Bill. <laughs> what do you I think, Sean? I've just got to go for Bill being subtle. You, you think Clara? No, I'm changing my mind now because he's German, so he could possibly believe about a spray room. Right. <laughs> so, have you just noticed now that yeah. Henning is German? <laughs> Just a second, yeah. So you, you think Henning now? N no, so, I'll stick. I'll stick with Clara. Stick with Clara, and you're sticking I'm gonna with, go with Lee. Lee. Yeah. You see, I think it's Henning. You think it's Henning? <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Think, yeah. Uh, we're gonna go Henning. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Bill. Would you please reveal your true identity? My name is Bill, and Henning bought an Irish <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> That's what you bought, Henning, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> and you genuinely we thought have it would have an effect open on your accent? Of some description. <laughs> Lee, would you... Why don't... Let me give it to you. 
It didn't work on Henning, but uh, might work on you. I don't think you gave me the right one. <laughs> I was once arrested by border guards for illegally entering another country. <laughs> David's team, what do you think? Wh which country? <laughs> it was in the mid 90s. That's not a country. No. <laughs> and it was in Eastern Europe, so they changed names very quickly. So I'm not sure. It was either Czech Republic or Czechoslovakia. I don't know which. Yeah, what stage of its yeah, exactly. dissolution it was at. Mm. Yeah. And what was the problem? I didn't have my passport. Right. Where had you left your passport? At home. <laughs> <laughs> Who were you with, by the way? Were you on your own? Or no, was I a... was with a friend from back home, Pitt. A friend from the Pitt? <laughs> no, with a person called Pitt. Is that his real name? <laughs> is that a nickname? Pete. Oh, Pete. No, oh. P I T. Oh, Pitt. Pitt. Oh, oh, is that Pitt. Pitt? <laughs> he's called, he's called Pitt. Like, like Brad Pitt, oh, oh. but yeah. Pitt is his yeah. first name. Otherwise, I would say Pete. Yeah. <laughs> We were travelling on something that was called Schönes Wochenend ticket. Yeah. And that's German for National Express. No. <laughs> now what it is German for, you can use any train you like as long as it's a slow train. <laughs> <laughs> we have that system with all of our trains. <laughs> 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 OK, so you get off the train at the border. You do. Is it at that moment that you realise you don't have your passport? Yes. So we wanted to go into Czech Czechoslovakia. So I didn't have my passport. So the obvious thing to do is don't go across where the border guards are, <laughs> but go a mile off into the fields <laughs> and cross there. If then someone wants to see your passport, you say, oh, I must have lost it. <laughs> <laughs> Roughly how far? into Czechoslovakia, in whatever form it was, were you? I was about, give or take, a mile. I see in the distance, I see, like, two lights, two white lights. They're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> and then I realise it's a jeep. And then they're driving towards us. <gasps> I'm quite gripped by this story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the jeep then just stopped, and then there is four people jumping out with automatic rifles <gasps> and dogs. Automatic dogs? <laughs> <laughs> what sort of dogs were they? I didn't ask for their names. But... <laughs> Neither did Alex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were terrifying dogs, probably Alsatians or something. What happened? They, they're all around you. So well, what they do all they jump say? out with their rifles, don't they? And I'm saying, of whatever their language is. So, <laughs> and then... <laughs> And then we had to gain the jeep, and then we were driving off into Czechoslovakia, and then we ended up in some woods. One of them jumps out, opens the gate, and I didn't even see what was there. Then there is some little wooden hut. And was someone in there that spoke German. We even got on well with that fella, and our excuse was that we said, we had no idea that we crossed the border. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and then, well, they didn't fully buy it, <laughs> but they knew there was little point executing us. <laughs> <laughs> what happens then? And now the funny story begins. <laughs> <laughs> they said, <laughs> you'll have to pay a penalty. Oh, the Germans that, and penalties. That Not penalty... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> then the Czechs drove us back to the German border, handed us over to the German border guards, oh. and then they congratulated us on being the first illegal immigrants from Germany into Czechoslovakia. <laughs> well, there we are. David, what are you and your team thinking? It's the travel mm. card thing. <laughs> It's just... It just seems right. You know, I think, <laughs> on an emotional level, having spent so long hearing that story... <laughs> <laughs> I sort of need it 
it to be true. Yeah. We need something. We need it to be true yeah. because a lot of our life went into that. Mm. <laughs> so so yes, you're going to say true. On that emotional level, I think we have to say true. You're saying it's true. Henning, truth or lie? Well, that story is actually true. Im Frühtau zu Berge wird sie faller. Es grünen die Wälder, die Höhenfaller. Wir wandern ohne Sorgen, singen in den Morgen noch eher im Tale die Ähne.